every day that I am on the internet and that I do writings and I interrelate to people and share with them or care or have a conversation where there's interaction and I observe the reaction to something that's either written or spoken or somehow some way is communicated with which they identify themselves and their response to something said, read, or heard, then I'm always brought back to Jesus because I remember the times that I too was far from him, although I admit when I got saved it was like immediate love relationship, but I remember the times that he was sharing with me and I I could see him as though sitting over Jerusalem and weeping because they didn't recognize the hour of their visitation. And he wasn't weeping because of their destruction. And he wasn't really weeping because they rejected him, but they're weeping, but he wept because they really did not know how personal and real he could be that he was standing there over Jerusalem, right there for their salvation and how he would have gathered them unto himself and how easy it was and how convenient it could be and how personal, personally real it would have been for them had they accepted him as he was, as he came, as he revealed himself being God in the form of the Son of God to them. And as being the Son of God, he wanted to introduce them to someone who loved even more than he did, which was his father. And there are times where, you know, I'd love to use that old English word that says grieves, but there are times where even my heart is burdened sometimes, where I see and I understand where people are coming from, but how they resist going that extra step to find out if Jesus is real, to find out if there really is a God, to really pursue and take the time to be as real with God as he is with them. And it just, for some reason, makes me sorrowful in some way, and even more tender, because I often think, or I used to, you know, why me, Lord? Why why did you pick me? You know, why me of all the peoples around that have so many other abilities and capabilities and strengths and, and are great speakers or great teachers or great whatever? And I think, God, you know, that person could be me. You know, why? Why did you choose me? You know, and I just would rather that more people be saved from wherever they are, however they are, even if they don't learn all or experience all that God has for them. God help them to be, you know, knowledgeable enough to just ask God into their life for salvation for no other reason except that it might be true. I mean, even if they don't get to know Jesus personally, if they don't get to know God in an intimate way, if they don't go all the way with God, I pray that someday they find enough faith to make that commitment to him that he would in his mercy spare them for great is the troubles that are coming upon them and they need someone to turn to and it's not a church it's not a steeple it's not the people but it's a personal relationship with the living God in daily life what God is there in heaven or on earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy mind who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Or to thy faithfulness round about you? Among the gods there is none like unto you, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto your works. For thy word's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like you. There is... Neither is there any God besides you. And according to all that we have heard with our ears, and all that we have seen, and all we have known, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children. 
when I share at times the things that other people don't agree with, like a rapture or a personal relationship with God or God intervening or God interjecting himself in their daily life or even hearing him, I know that I meet lots of resistance in the sense that people say, no, you can't do that. No, it, it doesn't happen. No, no, no. And you know, that's okay. Because if you haven't heard God speak and you don't know that Jesus is real and you don't know that God is real, I can only tell you to go on more alone with God to find out the truth. Because it's only that you and God will be blessed by that. Because the more that you seek to know Him, the greater He will reveal Himself to you. But the only way that you can, the only way that you'll know, isn't by following the people or seeking to be somehow given some extra spiritual anything. But rather, when you take the time, as we have this morning, to just be humble before Him and to walk daily with Him and to ask Him to show Himself to you and to literally speak to you, to guide you and to abide with you in your heart as well as your mind and in your soul and your feelings and your circumstances and your living arrangements in where you're at, the way you are today. Be with God today and God will be with you. He that glorifies, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord. There is no greater thing for you to know, no greater school for you to go, no other way for you to be except to know Jesus. Everyone can be something that they're not and then make themselves more puffed up than they actually are. But if you know Jesus, you have all that you need to glory in. You have all that you need to know. For when it comes time to speak, you don't need to memorize everything to have it ready to go. But all you need to do is to let the Lord lead you and God will speak through you to anyone and to everyone communicating in a way that they'll understand. Because it isn't you that speaks, but the Holy Spirit within you. He will cause you to speak the words that Jesus has already written in your heart and caused you to know in your mind and causes you to flow, as it were, or to go with what God has placed in your tongue in order to share with those so that they would know the name of His Son and that they would be conformed into His image and strengthened by His love to come to the place of grace that they would likewise find the same place that you are, trusting in the Lord with all their heart, leaning on to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledging Him and He directing their path. For as he is to able, as he is able, as he is able to direct your footsteps that are ordered of the Lord, and he is able to direct your path, then likewise he is able to control your tongue and to give you the words that need to be said, and he will. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. I have, wherefore I may glory, through Jesus Christ, in whose things which pertain to God. In whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My heart rejoices in the Lord. I rejoice in thy salvation. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Often, worship reminds us simply of what we say we believe until we actually do what we believe. And though we sing songs sometimes that say, take the whole world but give us Jesus, unless you do that daily, the question is, is Jesus waiting to hear from you and you from Jesus?